FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. FUD, it's everywhere. Social media, you turn on CNBC, Bloomberg, anywhere you go. Fear, uncertainty, and doubt. The world's coming to an end. Growth stocks are dead. You should just sell your stocks and not invest, not try to grow wealth and let the rich get richer, right? I know that you don't believe that or you would not be here. Let's talk about something that's actually in fashion because I've said this time and time again, guys. Institutional investors are thinking about six months and 12 months, not six years and 12 years. So semiconductors, the new oil, I've been calling it the new oil for a while. While, and I've done a series on the channel before, but I'm going to revamp that. Basically a 2.0 version starting today in 2022. What are my top 10 semiconductor stocks? And we're going to do several videos in this series. You're going to want to subscribe and check it out. If you recall back in 2019, this was around May of 2019, I made a video, top five autonomous driving stocks. NVIDIA was the number one stock on there. And if you remember, it got slaughtered in 2018. It was down 50%. And I said early 2019, I thought NVIDIA would recover and that it's a long-term investment and I'm gonna buy more shares. Since that video, NVIDIA is up over 700%. And the reality, guys, is it still has lots of room to run. And this whole sector does. What's great about it is that everything needs semiconductors to work. From this microphone, this computer, the TV behind me, your car, you think of autonomous vehicles, more and more of those chips and sensors and equipment needs to go into those. That is just getting started, guys. We are in a huge mega trend for semiconductors, and that's going to that's going to go on for five, ten, or more years. So let's look through that sector, the new oil, and find the best stocks that we can invest in long term, dollar cost average. What's great about these stocks is that they're in the Wall Street Fashion Show. They have earnings, they're profitable, they for the most part have PE ratios, pay a nice dividend yield. So they're very much in fashion. If I'm an institutional investor, I might go after semiconductors in this type of environment for growth versus the hyper growth stocks. So it's great timing for this guys. I have lots of semiconductor exposure throughout my portfolio, including ETFs, but I'm gonna give you my top 10 stocks. So today I'm gonna give you picks six through 10 and you wanna subscribe because in two days on Thursday, I release my top five semiconductor stocks for the next decade. You're gonna to wanna to see this series, guys. Let's get it started. This is from the Semiconductor Industry Association, or SIA. Global se semiconductor sales increased 24% year over year in October. Annual sales projected to increase 26% in 2021 and exceed $600 billion this year in 2022. So when you think of the semiconductor ecosystem, it's actually pretty diverse. And you can look on your screen here, there's thousands of inputs. There's raw materials that have to go in. You've got the software and the services. You've got the wafers, intellectual property. All this goes in. And really in the middle, you've got your equipment, you got your design, you got your fab, and you got your packaging. So what does that mean exactly? So really you have different types of companies on that top level. Left, you have fabless that's chip design so you think of amd you think of nvidia you got chip fabrication foundries like taiwan semiconductor and samsung you got chip design and chip fabrication idms and then you got osap for assembly so there's really four key areas of the semiconductor ecosystem so this is a quick snapshot here showing you fabless on the left foundries on the right and idm in the middle so intel does a combination samsung does a combination you think of foundries the leader taiwan semiconductor you think of fabless you think of names like nvidia amd but there's tons of other names in there as well. So another quick image here, semiconductor equipment. So you got LAM, Applied Materials, ASML, you've got KLA, the foundries, you know, again, you've, you've got Global Foundries, which recently did an IPO, Taiwan Semiconductor, UMC, Fabless. You got the Qualcomm's, Broadcom's, NVIDIA, AMD's. Memory and Logic, the big one usually you think of as Micron. Intel dabbles in that space as well. Samsung dabbles in a lot of these different areas as well. And then you've got these cloud hyperscalers, these companies that are starting to make their own chips. They're really not making them though. They're just designing the chips and then having someone like Taiwan Semiconductor or Samsung actually produce those for them. So AWS, you think of Apple, making their own chips. You think of even like Google and Waymo, Google Cloud, Nintendo, PlayStation, all these guys are starting to make more of their own chips and essentially design chips for their equipment, but they need companies like Taiwan Semiconductor, those foundries to make that happen because they actually take the design and produce it, manufacture it. Really great illustration here, guys. So that turquoise color is gonna be chip design software like Cadence. You've got the yellow, that's gonna be equipment. So semiconductor equipment like Applied Materials, LAM Research, KLA. You're gonna have your Fabless, which is that light blue, like the NVIDIA's, the Qualcomm's, and AMD's. 
So Fabulous basically, it's a company that designs microchips, but contracts out the production rather than having its own factory. So Fabulous, they're not actually developing or creating the chips with the factory. They're designing it and having somebody like a TSM, Taiwan Semiconductor in the pink there, the foundry. They're the type of business that will actually create those chips for those fabulous companies. And then you got IDM. So you see there's a big mix. I think this is a great picture. You get the US on the, on the very left-hand side. You got Europe on the top right. You got Asia on the bottom right. As I discussed in the intro, you use semiconductors really in everything. Anything that's electronic, for even kids' toys. You can kind of see on your left, automotive. So you got phones, you got healthcare, aerospace, safety, internet of things, energy efficiency, robotics, on and on. So all those different secular tailwinds that you invest in for disruptive innov innovation, their lifeline, their oil is semiconductors. You can, so you can say data or information is the new oil, but information in this era needs semiconductors to work. But think about it, guys. Basically, everything needs semiconductors to operate. You know, if you think today, right now, 2022, semiconductors really makes everything work. That's only going to get more sophisticated, more complex as we go on in the future. So you think of semiconductors over the next five and 10 years? To me, it's, it's a no-brainer. The sky is the limit. So in this series, that's what we're going to do. We're going to find the best stocks, the best companies to invest in to take advantage of this secular tailwind. So real quick, before I get into my picks, I'm going to give you five stock picks here in a second. But I want to show this just because I, I think it adds clarity just to how important semiconductors are not glo just globally, but also for America. It's one of our top exports. You look at aircraft, 72 billion, refined oil, 65 billion, crude oil, 50 billion, and right behind crude oil, semiconductors at 49 billion. U.S. semiconductor manufacturers maintain more of their manufacturing base in the United States than any other country, though this share has decreased steadily over the last eight years, something to keep in mind and, and keep pay attention to. So the U.S., 43.2%, and you've got China at 5.5%. They're really starting to grow quickly and expand. Japan's in there at 8.8, .8, Europe 9.6, Taiwan 9.7, Singapore is second largest at 18.3%. One last thing to point out, guys, U.S. semiconductor innovation policy landscape. So the government has basically shared with us that they feel it's very important that we maintain U.S. leadership in semiconductors and in cybersecurity. So this is talking about basically how the U.S. needs to continue that leadership and ways that we can do that. Why I want to point it out is just as an investor, it's good to know that the government is actually creating programs and trying to find ways to stimulate innovation within our semiconductor sectors. All right, top 10 semiconductor stocks. I'm going to kick it off with picks 10 through 6. So I'm going to give you the back half. In the next video, I'm going to give you the top five picks. So number 10 is Taiwan Semiconductor. This list would not be complete without Taiwan Semiconductor. It is the world's largest foundry. Very, very important company. Very important stock. These guys have 24% of the market share when you think of the semiconductor industry. So huge company. $729 billion. Very large cap. It's trading at a 35 P ratio. 1.33% dividend yield. You can see it made a nice pop to $145 all-time high. You could have bought it in 2021, close to $100. It just made a nice pop. The sentiment's been really bad. And part of the reason, while it has some China exposure, it's also an ADR, so it might have been kind of bundled in with those Chinese stocks. That's part of the reason why this stock isn't higher on the list. Because honestly, guys, you could argue that this might be the biggest moat out of the entire top 10, but it also has unique risks as well. And so that's why it's not higher on the list. But when you think about this company, they have 11,617 products utilizing 281 different technologies. They are the largest foundry. So many companies rely on these guys. They're, they're destroying their competition when you look at what they can do versus like Samsung or Intel, for example. So when you think of foundries, these guys are the leader and they have to be on the list. If you fall fired up wealth, if you don't fall fired up wealth, you should. You should hit the subscribe button, that little red button on the bottom right hand corner, click the bell to get notifications. But if you follow Fired Up Wealth, you know that I like curveballs and this is a curveball for you. Excellus Technologies, this is actually a small cap, $2.3 billion, tickers ACLS. The reason that this isn't higher on the list is it has significant exposure to China, which is a potential threat, potential risk to the stock. Now, this was a buy around $30 in Discord. If you're interested in joining our Discord community, check out patreon.com backslash Fired Up Wealth. I share all my buys and sells in there if you join Elite or Platinum. But this was a buy about th around $30 uh, early 2021. It's up over well over 100% since the Discord buy. 
And the sentiment is very, very bullish. It is up to a 31 P ratio, so it is more expensive now. A lot of these stocks in fashion have run pretty hard. Now, Excellus was named to Forbes list of America's best small cap companies recently. They have 43 technology patents. They have 32 plus years of experience. So they've been around for a while. I like them for their Purion tools. They've, they've got equipment that essentially helps make uh, EV chips. So chips for EVs, autonomous vehicles, electric vehicles. And that's really why I like these guys. This is Excellus investor presentation just from December. I mean, these guys, they're crushing it. They're absolutely crushing it. The risk is that China exposure, like I said, it can be looked at as a positive because China is trying to grow so much and they could use this equipment from Excellus. This is a Massachusetts based company. But you look at this, you know, semiconductor golden age continues. All segments continue to grow. They talk about golden age, the new oil, fundamental growth drivers for long term cycles. So communications, 5G, Internet of Things, AI, you know, all the different secular growth trends we talk about. What I really like these guys for is the electrification of the automotive industry in ADAS. So computer on wheels. If you look through this, I mean, they're absolutely just crushing it. You look at their growth. The mature process technology segment saw significant growth in 2001, accounting for an estimated 82% of Excel Systems revenue. So there, there's obviously some risk here because they're very focused and centralized. They're a small cap as well. They've got exposure to China, but it's one of my favorite semiconductor stocks. We bought it at a great time in Discord, and I'm still holding this one long. I'm putting it at number nine on my top 10 semiconductor stock list. Dividend Yield Seekers Unite Broadcom is going to be number eight on the list, ticker AVGO. It pays a 2.75% dividend. PE is actually a 44, but it did pull back. It was $677. It's pulled back to $582. You can see this last little hump here. I do like this stock longer term. It's obviously not my favorite semiconductor stock in the world, which is why it's not higher than it is. But I like it for its yield. I like it for its longevity. They're very diverse in the different things I do. They bought CA Tech, which is a software company a few years ago. I really like that play. And there's just a lot going on under the hood. So it's like a conglomerate, really. Um, a $246 billion, very large cap. It's a, it's a conglomerate, really, when you think of semiconductors. Now, number seven is Qualcomm, very similar to Broadcom, where they have their hands in lots of different pots. I really like these guys for the 5G play primarily. 1.4% dividend yield, 1.44%. So nice little DGI type stock, 23.98 on the P ratio. This is a large cap, $211 billion. You can see like a lot of them, it's made a huge run. So it just ran recently. So a lot of these stocks, I'm not necessarily saying you should go out and buy them today at these levels. I always dollar cost average. You can see though that these guys had a huge bump after their last earnings and they went from basically $130, $140 a share all the way up to $193 a share and have pulled back to $183. So it's still not that expensive when you think of the overall PE ratio, although Qualcomm historically has a lower type PE ratio. It is one of my favorite stocks in the semiconductor space and I do own some of this one. It's a nice DGI type play. So this one is number seven on the list. So number six, guys, is going to be ASML Holdings. Now, this is an ADR. This is a company based in the Netherlands. People ask me all the time, why don't you own this stock? It seems like it's right down your alley. You have Lamb Research and some other companies like this. It seems like it'd be right down your alley. They have a moat. The answer is I can't own everything. A lot of the Discord community likes this and owns this stock. And they do really have a monopoly. When you think of the EUV chip making, I mean, they, they, they really do have competitive advantages in that space. So it's a $310 billion, very large cap. It trades pretty expensively around a 47 P ratio. It does have a small dividend yield. 0.53%. So if I look at the growth, I mean, it's solid 32% year over year revenue growth. It's got a 33% net profit margin, very solid numbers. No question there. Now I will say a lot of semiconductor companies have similar growth metrics and trade at lower or more reasonable valuations. This one's a 48 P ratio. The market cap's about $300 billion. Um, for me personally, guys, if you want my opinion, I like this company when you think of five and 10 years out because they do have competitive advantages, especially in the EUV, but I would personally want to pay less for it. I don't own this stock. And if I were going to buy it, I would wait for a more of a pullback than it's already had. It's pulled back some, but I would want it even cheaper than it is now. But I do think even if you buy it here, that in five years, you'd be very happy with the results. But number six, guys, ASML Holdings. All right, guys, so make sure to subscribe. Click that little red subscribe button in the bottom right-hand corner. Click that bell to get notifications because in two days, I'm gonna come out with my top five semiconductor stocks. You're gonna wanna see that video, guys. If this is helpful, drop me a like, drop me a comment, helps the algo. Appreciate your time and attention. Have a great rest of your day. Take care.